Magic 8-Ball, are you going to give me supposed to shake a really cheap song vase today? Cannot predict now. Man, this thing's a very indecisive 8-Ball. <laughs> <laughs> but originally it said most definitely. That's my nice. luck. with that. Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today and in this video I am thrilled to finally be meeting Alex and Aaron from Chapter 2 Vintage Co. They're bringing their kids down and we are heading to Micanopy, Florida, an area known for its beautiful historic town and of course vintage and antiques. So I can't wait to take you along on this awesome adventure and show you what we find. Let's go folks! Hello. Hi guys. We finally meet. We, meet. we do, yay. Florida people getting together. Fun. Man, oh man, what an exciting time. It was just so great getting to meet Alex and Aaron, and I'm so glad it finally worked out. Now the first stop on our Micanopy tour was a little place called Micanopy Trading Outpost, and they were one of the only stores open when we arrived in Micanopy. Many of the stores said that they were open online, but when we got there, that wasn't actually the case. They tend to just open when they feel like it, and that makes sense because it's a town of about five. 500 people so there's not really a regimented schedule for some of these stores now this store here had a lot of interesting antiques and vinyl and artwork of course their prices were a little on the high end so we didn't get anything from here but i have to say that burroughs adding machine was really really cool to see in person because i love those kinds of things and they had tons of vinyl i'm telling you this town was the place to shop for vinyl because i found some really cool things and again, there was just a lot of great artwork and interesting antiques in this store. We didn't stay here very long because, again, the prices were quite high. Those opera glasses were so neat. And they had just a really, really unique gathering of items. So definitely fun to walk around in and a great first stop on our tour in Micanopy while we were waiting for some of the other stores to open. <music>
we are off to our next antique stop. And it was a little muggy and hot in Florida, so my camera lens kept fogging up everywhere we went. Now, Micanopy is an area known for its vintage and antique stores. And this next little place we visited, well, I shouldn't say little, it was absolutely massive, certainly did not disappoint. I think Smiley's was by far our favorite antique mall we visited of the day. This place had a little something for everyone, and I felt like the prices in most booths were pretty reasonable compared to some of the other malls we had visited. So this definitely was a hit, and Alex and I came away with quite a few treasures. So if you're ever in the Micanopy, Florida area, I highly recommend Smiley's Antique Mall. find a swung vase here today, Magic 8 Ball. For cheap though. Conservative, oh no, what does that say? You need glasses. You know I'm blind. <laughs> oh, Concentrate ask, and oh, ask again. Oh, I'm blind, all right. <laughs> you ask it then. Okay. Magic 8 Ball, are you gonna give me supposed to shake a really cheap swung vase today? Cannot predict now. Man, this thing's a very indecisive eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> but originally it said most definitely. That's my yes, luck. with that. <laughs> Now this antique mall had all the kits in the world, and I don't think I've ever seen so many salt and pepper shakers in one spot. And check out those teeth. Now these were priced fairly at $12 a piece, but not something I could get for a sale. Now all of my uranium peeps are going to jump for joy when they see this case. I love the way they've used the black light strips to highlight the uranium here. It really does show it off well. Now I didn't buy any of this uranium and to be honest it was priced a little high for what it was these are fairly common patterns anchor hawking ballerina cameo Jeanette cherry blossom federal madrid and the list really does go on i did notice that little halloween pez dispenser but i wasn't sure he was a true original so even at four dollars he stayed behind now this display case was pretty cool and had some vintage foo dogs and a whole bunch of other really neat things and it was on sale and oh boy when we got to this booth i was definitely drooling check out the vintage jewelry they had some amazing pieces and oh my gosh those brooches were stunning and they were only 14 dollars a piece which in the world of brooches to me was totally reasonable i didn't pick any of them up because i did find some other brooches that i liked a tad better but these were pretty fabulous and alex and i were talking about those vintage purses and and how hard they are to find at a reasonable price she collects them and i'm always on the hunt for her so hopefully alex i'll find you one one day now they had more jewelry all kinds of clip-ons and bracelets and just really neat and interesting things in this display case and i had so much fun looking at it all 
Now this next booth was totally a Katie booth, and in all the rusty, crusty advertising that just makes my little heart so happy, and of course, printer's trays and tools to boot, now Alex and Aaron were finding some fabulous vintage license plates, and I found my holy grail, my white whale find. I picked up another vintage gallon oil can to add to my collection. Now these can get into the hundreds of dollars, depending on the can and the graphics, so for $60, of course, it came home. And speaking of Katie Booth, this next booth was totally a Katie Booth. It was filled with all kinds of 45s and 33s. Definitely my kind of place, and I was so in my element here, digging through crates and crates of vinyl. There is just something about digging through a crate of vinyl that is so exciting because you never know if the next album you're going to flip to is one that's been on your want list, and it's right there waiting for you. Now, this booth had great prices. All vinyl was between 5 and $10.00 and they were running a sale. So I bought quite a few albums from here, and I did find some original Beach Boys, which I was so excited about, and of course, a 40s box set of big band music featuring my favorite, Glenn Miller. So much to see here, and so many fabulous albums. Brigida and I'm a volunteer docent with the Mikanopi Historical Society Museum and uh, the town of Mikanopi is reportedly the oldest inland town in Florida. It was started in 1821 to trade with the Seminole Indians, it's wanton trading post uh, and uh, the building you're in is, was a warehouse for the general store and it was built in the 1890s. Well, thank you so much. Now, was this movie here filmed? Yes, Doc here? Hollywood was filmed here. So it was filmed in uh, 89. And uh, these are some of the photographs from when they were filming. And uh, quite a few of the people in town were extras in the movie. Oh, how cool. That must have been a very big deal for this small town. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. After our wonderful visit with the Micanopy Historical Society, we grabbed a bite to eat at one of the only cafes in town and then trucked on to our last stop of the day, Antique City Mall. And hats off to Aaron for finding this place because they had some fabulous vinyl. Now, we did visit a few other antique stores and vintage shops in the area, but they were either closed or they didn't let us film, and that really seemed to be the story of the day. I think a lot of the antique malls just decided it was a nice time to go fishing so we're just gonna close and you'd go up to an antique mall and there would be no joke a paragraph long list of when they may be open may being the key but that's just small town living for you now this place had some fabulous vinyl and this was not the only section of vinyl they had they had it everywhere along with everything else this place was packed to the brim it was two stories and there was so much to see and 
every single nook and cranny. And this place had so many paperweights. I kept thinking to myself, this must be a paperweight convention because this was not the only case that had tons and tons of paperweights. Now, this mall had prices a little bit higher, so Alex and I didn't get a ton. That little doggo was cute, but he was like $250. So they had things priced pretty high. But the vinyl definitely was a real find, and there was just so much to see. One of the things that I loved is getting to see that chandelier, because that was just a stunner of a piece. And yes, the mall goes all the way to the back and up to the second floor. There was so much to take in, you just couldn't see it all in one go. So I turn around and I am absolutely gobsmacked. There is a whole booth full of vintage holiday things, primarily Christmas and even some cupies. I mean, this place was just pure heaven. They had tons of pixies and gorgeous German ornaments and shiny brights. And this is just something that we don't see in Florida very often. I think people move and sell all their stuff and then retire here. And look at that little owl, isn't he darling? And this pixie here. And of course, I have to shout out that Empire Blow Mold and those mercury glass candles that we're all drooling over. I'm even watching the footage back and going, oh my gosh, this is just amazing. They had so many cool things here. This next booth had some absolutely 
gorgeous brooches. They had some trafari and Austrian pieces, total eye candy. But unfortunately, even with the 25% off, they were just a little bit out of my price range. So I left them behind. Now, folks, we got to bring back the clear glass. And here is some of my favorite glass. I love Faustoria. And this is Faustoria Baroque in the Corsage Etch. And even for $65, I feel like that's a very fair price for the pair. And then they had this absolutely stunning Faustoria Navarre bowl with the flame handles. Just so gorgeous. <laughs>
Well, I found the Elusa Beatles White Album for only $35, and it was very cool to see, but after further inspection, it was the second press. Now, I'm no vinyl snob, but when I find this in the wild, I really want it to be the true first press on the Apple label, loading from the top, not from the side. So don't shoot me, but I left this fabulous piece behind. Well, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed going along on my little adventure to Micanopy. And I had a ball meeting Alex and Aaron from Chapter 2 Vintage Co. We even found a Chapter 2 sign. So before my next video, I'll be catching you over on Instagram. And I hope, as always, you will stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. Bye-bye now.